the glasses. Oh, this is a double here. This yes, is. this is a first class from here. Is there somebody else out there? Yeah, come on in, sir. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. man, this is way more spacious. Yeah. Come on in. So this was... Come on in. This was like a, a so, crew? So this, no, this is a first class room. Ah. Okay? So... So you can have it set up with sofas like this on each end, or this will make into a bed. You can have two beds on each end. So this is the same here. It's just that's down. This is yes. Okay. And so this will drop down and make a bunk, and you have another one over there. Oh, so you have four sleeping. Right. And then with the doors, you can divide it in half. Oh wow. Have two small rooms, in which case you'd have a, a sink for each side, and you'd have a toilet for each side. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, Everybody wants pictures of the friendly. toilet. What? I hope if that, that many people in here were really friendly. Like yeah, you have to be really friendly. Yep. That's impressive how it just folds up there. And this car was made in 1950 and it ran until 72. Uh, logged over 5 million miles. Sweet. Yep. Sure. Yep. Come on in. can slide out. Yeah, yeah. One in, and then we'll, we'll. If you let them out, then you can come in. Yeah. And it's still running today, though. Yep, still running. I like how you have your own uh, um, reporting marks on the car. Yep. A wand, a wand out of the train that stopped. In the train. Right. Yeah, she won this. You can go to your room. Bye. <laughs> They even have a fan up here. Oh, oh, this is a oh, wow. St. Helens is still in existence and it's in Spokane and it's yeah, privately owned. Man. Yeah. It had been owned by a, by a steam tractor club yeah. which was a clubhouse for a number of years yeah. and that was back in the Dakotas. Yeah. And now it's now it's owned by a private party who owns about five other railroad cars including some Northern Pacific dome cars. Yes. Huh. This is where I'd hang out. Very nice. Well yeah I mean Pullman made a lot of cars. They were a big oh, sure. car builder. Each railroad company was 
that could cost a hell of a lot. Oh, come on. Even a board or whatever they wanted. Floor plan. Well, yeah, the, the railroad would, would go pick a floor plan from, or designate how many seats they wanted right. in a coach or anything like that from, from the manufacturer. And the two primary manufacturers were Pullman Standard and, and Bud. And Bud made all stainless steel cars. Where was Bud located? I remember Pullman, Illinois or something yeah, like that. Yeah, someplace back there. I mean, I'm not sure exactly. I've heard of Pullman, but I haven't heard of the other one. Well, Bud, Bud made more fluted size. Most of their cars were all fluted size, and they were all the silver cars. Same as this. Familiar with the California Zephyr? Yeah. Okay, those were all Bud cars. Actually, that train was owned by three different railroads. In other words, it was owned by the Western Pacific, the uh, Rio Grande, and the Burlington Railroad. Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy. And they each owned a certain number of cars on that train. You would say California Zephyr in the middle, and then at the end of each car it would say WP, or CB&Q, or D&RG for, for the owner of the car. But all three railroads ran the train, and when it switched railroads, it also switched motive power. Dad, this is the West Coast. This is the round. What are they getting? Do they run charters? Come on, man. during the summer? This car is not MPEX certifiable today. It could be made that way with a nice fat wallet, but it's the, the problem is it doesn't have the cables that run underneath the oh cable. the HEP or whatever the HEP cables. What do they do? Uh, it, it transfers the see the new cars are all electrical power and to run a car behind Amtrak you have to have the, the cables for pass through power whether you're powered on that or not this does not have the cable thirty thousand dollars is about what it cost to put the cables in and then it also because the car was built in 1950 it's over 40 years old once a car reaches 40 years old every seven years you have to have what they call a 40 year inspection on it that means jacking the car up, taking the running gear, the trucks out from underneath it, taking all parts, inspecting them, and there's various ways you can do that. Putting it back together, that's about $10,000. That hasn't been done either. That doesn't mean that the, the car isn't transferable, but it just isn't Amtrak compatible. Okay, but they can use it for the private excursion. Yeah, they take your picture by lawn? Correct. On excursion on, on, on trains mom. and things like that. It yeah, could just... Freight hey, uh, I noticed you had... Yeah, you had your uh, um, reporting marks on there, so it's all... Yes, it's owned by the... Right, but so it's already... But could they pull it behind the steam engine? The it has been behind yeah. the steam engine. Uh, and it will be run behind the steam engine for the Holiday Express down there. Right, the right. But the steam engine, the, when you take the, like the big steam engines, like the 4449, on a trip today... They either have to be sponsored by the railroad, oh. or they have to be sponsored by Amtrak, because it's $500 million worth of insurance. Oh, yeah. And the only way you can get that is through Amtrak. So if you're running it with with an Amtrak sponsorship, then every car behind the train has to be Amtrak certified. I see, right. Or right. if you're running it with railroad sponsorship, like maybe the Burlington Northern might want to take the SPNS 700 someplace, then they set the set the goals, and as long as you're as long as you pass the inspection, yeah, the standard railroad car inspection, you can run it behind the steam engine. This car went to New Orleans behind the 4449 in 1984. Oh. Oh yeah, the Freedom Train. Well, no, the daylight. Oh, the daylight okay. The, you know, the, the the rib. It was painted in daylight colors at that time hmm. to match the rest of the train. Right. It also ran behind the Royal Hudson on its West Coast tour in 1981 oh. or 80 or 81. And it went to the California State Rail Museum opening in 81 huh. uh, behind the daylight. So it has it has run its steam. It has run. Uh, Adapt, it's, 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 it's been in, it's been in a, it's been in a, about half a dozen different paint schemes. Originally, of course, it was, it was what you see out there today. Then uh, it was painted in SPNS colors. Then it was painted in Amtrak colors. Then it was painted in <coughs> Canadian Pacific colors for, oh. for the for the Royal Hudson tour. Then it was painted in daylight colors. And now it's back in the, what was originally the Liberty, which is the Great Northern Empire builder paint scheme. Oh. 
But it's nice to have it here because this is where it was, you know, where, oh, yeah. where yeah. it goes. This is uh, pretty much its home base. Well, yeah. Vancouver was its home base. Is it stored over at Holgate? Where do they keep it? We get it I think it's been over at Holgate. Also, they, they, they have a track, a track at a business park. Where is, where is its home at? Portland? Where, where at? Well, it's, it's, it's either Brooklyn or, or, or in a business park. You know, where some of these business parks have tracks that run through them. The big concern is always is always vandalism. Yeah. You know. And it depends on what, when and how long out it's going to be used. I think it's been. At